Dirty here for CineCam.net and welcome back to Copycat Friday, the weekly series in which we try to recreate the visual effects from famous movies or music videos. And today, you guys have been asking like crazy to recreate the Loki transform effect from the Disney Plus series like you can see right here. It's a very cool effect that we initially didn't thought to recreate since there are already plenty of tutorials out there like the one from Production Crate. So we're going to do it our way inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Now if you love Loki as much as we do then definitely make sure to subscribe to our second channel which is Premiere Basics link in the description down below because Jill who hosts the channel is going to upload a tutorial about how to create the intro text animation this Wednesday. So go check it out, subscribe and click the bell. Now let's get started with the Loki transformation effect. Before we start and show you guys how the effect is done, there is something I need to tell you. As you know, Premiere Pro and After Effects are completely different programs. Premiere Pro is used for mainly editing and really small VFX work like transitions, while After Effects is made for bigger and heavier VFX work and motion graphics. And since we're making this effect in Premiere Pro, it could be that you experience some slow performance from the program. So if you're experiencing this, I can recommend you guys to render between effects so making the actual effect will go way smoother. I think so. I'm an astronaut. Nope. Did you meet Justine? Now for this effect we created an easy light setup, but with a hint of Loki. You can see this purple light in the background, but also a green light in the background, giving you that Loki feeling. But we are going to use a green screen later on when we are shooting the effect, so the position of your lights is quite important when using a green screen. We can't use green as a backlight because then you can't key yourself out, so we use the purple color to give that extra contrast on the side, making the key much easier. Then we put the green light in the back to still have that Loki feeling. And that's really it for the light setup. Now, as you know already, these effects are not meant to be made in Premiere Pro. Normally, we would do these in After Effects, but maybe you don't like the software or aren't just familiar with it yet. And if you aren't, I got the perfect solution for that. On Skillshare, we have an Adobe After Effects class for beginners, where we teach you everything you need to know on how to create visual effects and motion graphics. We already received a lot of positive feedback from the community, so go check it out. Now, apart from this class, Skillshare offered tens of thousands of more classes. The online learning community keeps expanding every day. Recently I watched YouTube success strip, shoot and edit with MKBHD, which is a very interesting class. He talks about how he plans, shoots and edits his tech videos, and even though his videos are tech related, you can take these tips and apply to all kinds of videos. In his lesson about growing your channel, he talks about how to get people to watch your other videos. And there I got a really useful tip. When you start your video, let the viewer know what you are doing is something you do more often. Like in our case, making visual effects tutorials. Hey guys, it's Jordi here from Cinecam.net and welcome back to another Copycat Friday, the weekly series in which we try to recreate visual effects from famous films and music videos. So when they finish the video and like it, they will go to your channel and watch more. So thank you Marques. Skillshare is specifically curated for learning. There's no ad, so it kind of works like Netflix. Now the first 1000 to click our link in the description below will get a free trial of premium membership. So go grab it before it's gone. Yeah. What's wrong, Janik? It's stuck. <laughs> Why is it stuck? Oh. Back in business. <laughs> is it the film, eh? You guys have seen me naked before. You're fine with this. I mean, I feel comfortable. You guys? <laughs> Worst flash costume ever. <laughs> I got to get slight news. What? Okay, Oh, yo. Neo from the Matrix, you know? Wow! Wow! Come on, Lorenzo. 
The actual shoot for this effect is pretty easy. Just put your camera on a tripod and shoot an empty shot. Once that's done, move your green screen in frame and let your talent do its thing. Act out the scene and at a certain point do a simple movement for the transition. Then change outfits, go stand on the exact same point, which I recommend you guys to mark down on the ground with some tape and continue acting from the same position. And if everything went well, you should be able to make the perfect match cut from outfit to outfit. We have our two shots that we need, so now it's time to create the Loki transformation effect. Okay, once inside Premiere Pro, we can start by placing our background clip and the two talent shots in our timeline. Then we are going to sync the talent's movements. For this, we looked for a point with a distinct movement, like an arm swing, a head turn, something we can easily match. Now, once we have done the matching, we can key out the green. We took the ultra key effect and dragged that to our clip. Then we selected the green and fine-tuned the settings to remove any spill. Of course, we also created a mask around our talent to get rid of everything we don't need from the environment. Okay, we have two clips which are matched in movement and keyed out. Next up we'll be creating the green glowing line and the transition from one clip to the other. First step we have to do is create a rectangle shape layer and this shape needs to cover our entire talent completely. Then we're going to animate the position for this shape going up or down. You can do it randomly because it doesn't really matter which direction as long as it goes off screen. We made the animation 25 frames long and also shortened the entire clip to this length. Then we place the clip on the position we want the transition to happen. Next, let the top talent clip end at the same point as the graphics clip, making the transition complete. Now, we also gave our keyframes an ease in or out and tweaked the animation curve a little more to go slower in the beginning. Once the animation was done, we added the turbulent displays effect to our graphic layer and played around with the settings until we had something that looked cool. Of course, we also animated the evolution of a turbulent displacement, giving it more movement. Then we looked for the track matte key effect and added that to both our clips. In both the track matte effects we changed the matte to video 4 and composite to matte alpha. However, for the bottom talent clip we will also enable the reverse option revealing the clip instead of removing it. Now, because our second talent disappears, we need to make a cut in the talent's clip, where the graphic layer ends, and remove the track matte key effect in the clip after that cut. And look at that, we already have some sort of transition. Next up will be the green glowing line. For this line we took our graphics layer and duplicated one track higher. Then we also duplicated the top talent clip and placed it on top of everything. We of course shortened this new duplicate to make it as long as our graphics clip. Again we looked for the track matte key effect and added that to our new graphics clip. Adjusted the matte to video 6 and then we went into the shape settings. Here we disabled the fill option and enabled the stroke option. Choose the color green and gave the stroke a width of 20. Now you normally have a green line moving over your talent revealing the other talent. However, we're not done yet. The last step will be adding some glow effects. First, we nested our two duplicate clips which create the green line. On this new nested sequence, we are going to add the VR glow effect and adjust the settings until we have a nice glow. Then we also added the directional blur effect and increased the blur length a bunch. Next, duplicate the directional blur effect, decrease the blur length and set the direction to 90 degrees, leaving you with a nice shine-like effect. Now we just change the blending mode to linear dodge add and duplicate the entire nested sequence twice. Then we selected our top nested sequence and deleted both directional blurs. However, add a Gaussian blur to it with an increased blurriness. And that's it. Oh, hey Lorenzo, I heard you were doing something with superheroes this week. Yeah, we are. But why are you asking? Well, if you need a superhero, Lorenzo, I'm your guy. Check this out. I can be anyone. Yeah. The Flash! You, 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 you. What do you think, Lorenzo? I'm super fast. No? All right. I can be someone else too. The ghost from the ant man. A critical, right? Huh? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Neo from the Matrix, right? You know? Come on, Lorenzo. You know what? The last one is going to baffle you. Hang in there. What do you think, Lorenzo? Invisible man! <laughs> you know I can see you, Jordy? Like, everything? What? You can see me? Damn it. And that was it, guys. Now stop asking us to recreate the transformation effect from Loki. Because we just did it.
All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new, that you had a good laugh. Thank you, Skillshare, for the support. Definitely make sure to grab your free premium membership. And as always, stay creative. Oh, hey guys. It's Jordy from Cinecom.net, and welcome back to Coffee Get Friday. We'll get a free trial premium. We'll get a free trail. So go grab it before it's gone. So go grab it before it's gone. So go grab it before it's gone. Hey, if you need a superhero lens, well, Malek is stuck. <laughs>